basic we'll just finish it and then that. you can take questions um line draws like uh so basic basic tutorial about a cat you use line command they draw separate lines like let's say it 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 and even if i type c to close your shape it closes all your lines are separate components um each of them are not joined you can join them using join and then it becomes one whole shape or you can just use the polyline command to draw connected lines it, it, it. and then it becomes one whole shape uh, generally, I prefer to use the line command. It gives me a lot more controls over my layers. Um, speaking of which, you can go into your layers bar, create a bunch of new layers. Let's say a thicker line, thinner line. And then you can click here to change the colors. So generally just this helps with differentiating the different lines when you're drawing, so let's say 60, uh, and then let's say blue. So it's just a lot easier to differentiate. And then these are line weights. These are usually what props are looking for. Usually uh, thicker lines are the ones closer to you, and then thinner lines are the one further away from you. Or you can use like them differently in specific cases. Like you can use a thicker line for a ground line, which I believe you guys are doing for your arc 100 assignment um so you can use a thicker line to show like um the base of the floor of your drawing which i found was actually a really nice thing to add to your drawing um basically 50 i mean generally i do increments of 0.4 or 0.5 and then those are really good um you can see like differences, but it also the increments also depends on the amount of line weights you have. Generally, it's good to have around like five or six line weights in a normal drawing that will really help you differentiate. But hey, for today, six, yeah, I use five or six for simple drawings. They're doing simple drawings. I, oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so thicker lines. Um, I'll just use that. Uh, let's do 10, 10, and see, that's your floor plan. And then that's in a thicker line. And then let's say you have like peripheral like walls on it. So like, oh, wait, shit, I'm dumb. <laughs> It's, it's also like really useful to like just print out like yeah. a bunch of line weights and just keep it as like a, a piece of reference. Like yeah. you just do all the line weights from like so, zero to like one or something. As you can see, I draw a middle line here. You might ask why. Um, usually when you draw one, if they're the same, you can use like shortcuts like copy and then uh, copy it here. And then you can just rotate it on this axis. And then like that, or you can use like um, mirror like that, and then to mirror it. Uh, oh, uh, then you can also use like um, let's see, there trim is a command that you'll probably use a lot. So I'll just show that. And then basically you first select your two lines that you want to trim the other while well, the other lines with, and then you select trim and then you can trim those lines like that. Uh, yeah. Is there, uh, is there a split equivalent in AutoCAD? Split equivalent? Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a split equivalent. I mean, I mean, so like if I wanted to break the line, oh, like yeah, I don't think there. I think you just gotta trim it and draw it over in AutoCAD. Sadly, that's disgusting. That's that's, that's the advantage of Rhino. I'm gonna oh. <laughs> I'm gonna let's boycott say, AutoCAD boys. Let's say you lose your drawing by scrolling up too far or too in.
you can double click if you have a mouse. I hope you're using a mouse if you're drawing with CAD software. You can double click the middle mouse button and it'll zoom to your uh, drawing. Or if you don't have that, usually you have a toolbar here for Windows at least. And then you can just click this zoom extends and then zoom into it. Or lastly, if you're using Mac, I'm not really sure if you have this button or if you don't have a mouse, sadly, you just gotta type zoom extends, I think. Wait, nope. Oh, okay. Wait, I think it's you select everything and then oh damn. Okay, never mind. If you're using Mac, I'm not sure how that works. If you don't this have the, a mouse. This is the Rhino equivalent of zoom selected, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically. I don't think there's a zoom selected on AutoCAD mm -hmm. either. Uh then let's see. What else do you need? Uh to really make your work neat, sometimes you'll need fillet. So the way fillet works is, let me just draw another square for, for. So you can use this command fillet. Uh, and then you'll see you have a bunch of settings here. Uh, usually you just play with radius. And then this is the radius of your your fillet, um, let's just say one. And then that's your set radius right now. You click this line, this line, and then it'll give you a fillet of a radius of that. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yes. A uh, question I got a lot usually is like, if you draw it to a round scale, how do you scale it? Um, generally, you just click scale, you click, click a base point, And then if you know your scale factor, you can type that in, let's say like, three and then it scales up or if you need to scale it down uh, scale and then you click a base point anywhere on your anywhere on your drawing as like a specific trick base point and then you can scale it down by like if you know your fraction 0.25 that's a quarter and then you just scale it down like that um is there does, anything? Uh, does scale work in autocad if you put not not the not 0.25 but if you write like i know in rhino you can write like one over Fractions. 10 right yeah, yeah i believe it does you just click base point and then oh uh, one yeah it that works as okay well. cool and then, what about uh, uh what yeah. about scaling in like singular dimensions like if i only want to scale in the x or if i only want to scale in the y hard ducks use rhino i think <laughs> There's there's scale one D scale two D in in Rhino, yeah, so yeah. I was wondering like, I yeah thing. I think hard luck use Rhino. I think you can use extend <laughs> for that. Um, I, yeah, I I don't think, but, but it'll... It's, it's it's still different. It's like okay, so extend works in the way where you can draw let's say ten away, and then you need to have a like a line or a shape at the distance that you want to extend it to, you can click extend, and then you can extend a line to that. But it does not work for like, I mean, you can, of course you can do it for like, uh, let's say I have this line. Of course you can do it for like this line, this line and this line, it'll extend, but then uh, you'll have to basically delete this line and then you have this line. So you can just like trim it. So like, I mean, that's what you can do if you don't use Rhino and you use AutoCAD, you have to extend and either trim or move the previous line that was here to here. Move how how do you um, uh, work with other shapes like circles and arcs and like maybe curves if I need? Yeah, uh, sure. If you have a circle, let's say you just draw a circle, center point, and then this is the radius, let's say three. Uh, to work with an arc, arc's a lot more difficult. So I'll show you guys like, okay, when you do isometric, you guys are probably gonna do 3D really soon when you do isometric of a circle, that's actually pretty hard. So how do you, how do you do an isometric of a, how do you do an isometric circle? Uh, you do this, you draw like, let's say 10 is your- um, would, would you wanna explain what isometric is? Isometric is basically, uh, 3D perspective of an object in like 
a 30 30 degree angle lens so i'll show you guys what i mean by that so basically isometric is 30 uh one second bear with me i haven't done this in a while and then yeah basically copy this so there'll be this will be 150 and then copy this so and then this line will also be 150 this way um, let's say it's this copy basically it's looking at objects in a 3d way so this is how you can like see uh square or no, not a square a cube in like a 3d perspective it's uh like what do you call it a very unrealistic way of viewing objects but i uh, it's objectifies it and it's easier to understand the object when you draw it in isometric so let's say i have this you can draw like a, uh, a table would be drawn like this. So you do like one. So uh, the way I do that, the way I get like one this in this direction is your object snaps, which is down here for all the all the Windows people. All your object snaps are here. For Mac people, all your object snaps should be somewhere here i believe let me just double check that uh it might be under tools or something like that on the top for mac yeah or just like snap oh wait no no let me let me let me get this set things for you guys is it object snap object snap yeah object snap and then you type that in you can choose your own settings but generally these are the settings i really like endpoint midpoint center node quadrant intersection extension an extension is what i am using here so basically extension by one and then that's that this little spacing here is one right now and then you go up two and then you go across, uh, basically you come back to this side, you do one. And then uh, actually I do not have that length. Oh wait, it's two, but I'm copying it over here. I'm dumb and I forgot. So you draw a line in between here. You guys will soon see what I'm drawing. It's a table, but I don't have the length. So I have to like copy generally. If you're drawing, you'll know your length. Uh, so by like one. Thirty degree because you're looking in um, isometric view. So one, and then this. So this side you don't put it because uh, it kind of goes like this, which is behind the leg of the table. So like you don't really see it. It's like hidden from your view. And then this side you do like one, and then you do two because the table leg height was two. And then you can so I'll do like one more. copy this to this side. Then this is 150, the 180 minus 30, the other way to look at it, the 180 degree angle. And then there you go, if you like just delete these lines, you have your table. Oh, so 
You broke yeah. your table. Yeah, I broke my table. <laughs> Here you go, like trim this line. And then in an instance like this, you can oh wait, I missed one line. In an instance like this, you can just trim these. And then you have your table. Like and then um basically yeah you can use like line weights on this you can choose like a specific plane i mean sometimes it's just some props prefer not to use line weights on isometric some props do you can choose a specific plane to be your the plane most close the closest to you basically like you can choose the top plane to be closest to you which is this and then you can make this your thicker line and then usually you'll have more line weights but you can Thank make the rest of these I think specifically right. in isometric, generally the thicker line is actually the outline of the object, right? Yeah, yeah. You're trying to you can also do that. Uh, a lot of people like to do the outline of the object. I don't believe there's a shortcut way of doing this in AutoCAD, so you just ha really have to suffer, yeah, <laughs> suffer and put suffer. every outline. Yeah, I, I remember learning in uh, 201 that it's the outline. Um, yeah, yeah, and then for an instance like this, where you have an overlap of like the lines, you can just trim it, I guess. It really depends sometimes, yeah. I mean, it looks less awkward if you trim it, I guess. If I, I'm picturing it right now. Then yeah, you can in isometric view your outside lines can be thicker. Uh, what else? I was curious about what you said about um the object snaps. Like there was node and then there's intersection, but I don't really understand how they're different. Oh, so like this is in this is intersection, like as you see x yeah. O snap. That's the same symbol as this, the x. And then mm. node, uh, so node is special. It's like a specific point, one second. It's like a specific point that you can put for it to help your drawings. It's like in the Rhino, it's com the command is point. So you got, but in here, you got to change it yourself. So you got to type DDP type, and then you can select your specific nodes. Um, usually I use this one with a size of five, and then you click okay. And then you click on, uh, your node is here. Wait, let me. Yeah, just type point, honestly. And then that's a node to help you like identify a certain point on your drawing. Let's say you want to remember a distance of three on this. You can put a node usually. Sorry, it's point. Oh, and then you can click it there. Oh, is it? I think it's relative to my screen size. That's why I, you should have it in absolute units. Okay, five is way too large for this drawing. Usually, uh, you adjust it to the size of your drawing. So, like, let's say two, uh, and then you type node oh, point. Sorry, and then yeah, to remember like a specific space of your drawing. Just adjust it to the size of your drawing. That's what like node is for usually. Um, other than that, oh yes. Uh, isometric circle is really hard to draw. So I'll just show you guys how to draw it. If you connect the center to this and then you can do this as well. These are all your like scrap lines to draw it, I guess. I, I'm just setting it up. This is how I know how to draw it. Uh, in Rhino, you can just switch to isometric view and then I'll do it for you. Uh, so you got to select the, sh you see how this corner is the longer corner. You draw a line from the longest corner to the longest corner. And then on the shortest corners, you click the center, the center lines, uh, you draw it to the corner and then like this. And then AutoCAD has a really weird interface where it only draws uh, arcs in anti-clockwise direction, which is this direction, like, that direction. So you do an uh, arc. And then I really like to use start, center, end. Uh, so this is your start. 
this is your center and this is your end, but oh, I've messed up. Why is it not lining up? Wait, it's actually so complicated just to draw a circle yeah. and isometric. What the heck? Oh, I don't know why it's drawing it like that for this one. Let's see. Oh, it's slightly messed up for some reason on this. Let me just. The length over. of your table is like wrong? I'm not really sure. It's supposed to be working. Let me try it on a normal setup. Uh, 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. I believe it's because my. Yeah, it's not a circle, it's an oval because my lengths are not equal. Um, yeah, it's squashed, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a like ellipse. So you have it to draw a circle, it has to be equal length. So all of this is 10, 10, and 10. So yeah, you connect the center lines, you draw the longest corner, and then you connect the short corner to this. Usually once you do it on one side, you don't have to do it on the other side. By that, I mean like this and this. You don't really need that. It's just a bunch of lines to confuse you if you do that. And then start center end again. So anti-clockwise always start center end. And that's one. And then start. Oh, you center. draw the oh quarters I, of it? Yeah. In AutoCAD, you got to draw quarters of it. Start center end, and there you oh. go. You got your semicircle. So once again, start center end. So your start is always here, centers here, and your ends here. Start center end, and then for the opposite, it is start opposite corner end. So for here, oh. it's start center end, start center end. And there you go, you got your like little circle. You might ask, oh, how is this relevant? Let's say you can basically do like a uh, little stuff with this. Um, wait. Shoot, I should have done the other one, which is that. But honestly, it's fine. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember something. Just give me a second. Where the heck did you even learn this? Like it's so like it's such uh, a good yeah, yeah, I learned this in like drafting a uh, drafting kind of school thingy when I died it in high school. So I mean drafting classes in high school now? Yeah. I'm, yeah, in like where I come from, yeah. Where are you from? I I'm from Trinidad. Well, I did high school in Trinidad, so. What the heck? Like, yeah. I'm just gonna do another one to show like how you, it can be useful. Sorry, I should have. Wait, I didn't. Why? Why did you do high school in Trinidad? I did not know that. Uh, cause my parents are there for like business. Yeah. Just do another one to show you how it can be useful, and how to like connect certain lines. Why is it called Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, cause it's like two countries. But why do you refer to them as as one? Like, uh, why do people cause... say like Trinidad and Tobago? I really don't know. Shame on me for not knowing. <laughs> that oh, uh, so basically, another thing you can do is like this. I misplaced the line. You have three nodes here. This is like center point, start or end, start or end. And then you can drag it to fix it like that. Um, then you use the same thing, start center end. Oh, wait, that mess up. Start center. No, I didn't. Right? Okay. Wait, why is it drawing like that? Uh, I, I guess your no angles might be wrong. I guess it's 15 degrees instead of 30. Oh, that's why. Yeah, um, in isometric, everything is 30 degrees, right? Oh, yeah, this is wrong. Oh. You just rotate it, right? No, you can't, you can't rotate in isometric, so yeah. Oh, right. So if yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it becomes like a 
really weird thing. Thanks yeah, for looking, pointing that out. I was like, why does this look so weird? So basically, you do this. this. And then... I have a question that's like kind of offhand. Like uh -huh. I've always been confused about AutoCAD and how they use units. Like from what I know, AutoCAD is actually unitless. Oh no. Uh, no? Oh yeah, I had a person that asked, asked that. Let me just complete the circle and I'll show that. Sure. Because I was always like super see, lost. I made like a mistake here at the start. It's supposed to be here, since it's supposed to be here, but I drew it here. So it looks all weird. So you'll know if you select the wrong thing generally. So there you go, you have your circle there. All right, you ask about units, you can type units. And then as you see, you have all your stuff here. I have it in decimal. This is the precision range of your lines, basically how, like, how many points you go. And then you can set your units here, inches, millimeters, centimeters, meters, all of that uh drawing in centimeters might be good it's very relatable in case you're measuring stuff with a ruler so centimeters and then yeah everything's in centimeters now so basically yeah it has units uh you draw with would... units though like let's say if your drawing units are in like let's say now your drawing units are in centimeters but can you yeah. input the unit into the numerical like, entry, uh, like if you try to draw a line now, can you do I'm it in actually, inches? Is that possible? Let me, let me actually see. So basically I have lines selected. Let's see if I can do like nine inches. Let me try a short, let me try iron. No, I don't think you can. You can't draw in like different units. You probably have to convert it and then draw it or draw it in centimeters and then scale it to inches. So basically nine, let's say you're, the height's nine, and then the conversion rate from units to centimeters, shit, this dumb. Okay, so I need, you need to convert it from centimeters to units. So centimeters to inches, the conversion rate is 0 0.393, roughly. Uh, so you gotta scale it and then point, Three nine three. Now that's in inches. You gotta do it like the long way. Let's say if you had both lines, you could just select both lines and then uh, you could have just selected both lines and scale them both. Scale. Point. Oh shit. Yeah, that's the one thing about AutoCAD scale as well. If they're not on the same base point, it scales. Well, yeah, you, they scale like off of the, if you got to scale not the entire object and they're on different points, they wouldn't scale to the same area. So like you see how my line shifted because I scaled it and then you move it back. So generally you want to draw in the correct units actually. Yeah, uh, what else is there? There's a couple more things. Oh, why would this be useful? As you can see, I have a circle here. So this would be the edge. Um, you can do 15 and then you can do 15 on this side. So that's your height. And then you select this, this, and this, and then you can copy it from this point down and then here you'll select these two lines and you can trim these two and then voila, you have a rectangle. Not a rectangle cylinder, shit. <laughs> uh, what else is there? And then, oh, uh, plotting a lot. Oh, hi, Adela. Did you have a specific question? Yeah, she was asking sort of more um, general questions. Um, I mean, the first one, maybe you can answer this better than I can, because I'm very Rhino biased, but you know, what is AutoCAD better than Rhino at? I think earlier you said it's better at lines. Have you learned um, 3D Max or Revit? Uh, I haven't learned them. I know some people do Rhino Revit, but uh, I have not used Revit, so I can't really Revit is 
Revit is actually Revit is actually very useful. Like if you try to like actually do a house in Revit, it's a lot easier or it's a lot more efficient. Um, for school, I, I don't think Revit is really like super, super useful because the nature of how you model in Revit is very, um, is very different. Like Revit is very specifically catered towards making um, Standard houses. Buildings. Yeah. yeah, like it's very, very standardized. So like if let's say like you want to actually do like some kind of crazy design or like some kind of massing that's like, you know, very curvilinear, um, it, it is, it's for engineers, but it is also for architects. Like it's sort of built in a way that you can have a lot of collaboration between like the different um, One practices. Thing. Yeah. Uh, I know that you can select materials in Reddit. Can you render from Reddit? Is it easier as compared to other software? Um, I'm not sure about Revit rendering, actually. I haven't really tried Revit rendering. Yeah, I've, uh, I've only done like modeling in Revit. One software that I heard is really good is Lumion. I just downloaded it. I haven't got to test it out yet, but I heard it's really a lot more simple than the whole Photoshop process. Yes, mm. Lumion is uh, pretty good. I downloaded it as well. Um, it's it's nice. I'm 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 in, still in the process of learning it, but it is very user friendly. Yeah. yeah. The the one thing I will say about Revit is that people do use Revit a lot for work, so it's good to know. Um, and it's also really good for just making drawings from like a certain um, what's it called? Like if you have a certain design and you want to make drawings for it like quickly and efficiently, um, it's really good. Like actual like sort of like construction drawings um, like if you have multiple plans and like multiple sections like it's really useful for that um, it just organizes them really well um, other than that 3ds max that's like it's just really specific like let's say if you want to take if you want to do like animation or if you want to do something along that sort of line then you would use 3ds max otherwise i don't think a lot of people usually learn it um, and there's, there's sort of like a lot of alternatives to 3ds max as well. Like you can use like unreal engine or you can use like that, like blender. Yeah. Like it's, it's in that, it's like that side of <laughs> modeling. Um, so like, if you want to, if you want to learn like that kind of stuff, take, there's a course, there's a 400 level course called lazy computing with Andrew Baco, where you guys do animation. Um, so that's sort of like 3ds max blender um that's sort of like the place to experiment with that um he he also his thesis was also on revit so if you want to look up andrew Baco, i'll type his name here um he his harvard master's thesis was on revit it's pretty interesting i mean we can say that you know lumion is better for rendering or like um a certain software is better for rendering but there's also sort of the question of like, what kind of render are you trying to do? Which which you should also ask yourself, um, you know, does like, why must your render must, like, why must it be as realistic as possible? Or is it necessary for it to be as realistic as possible? Um, and there's sort of dangers with making your render realistic, right? Because it sort of takes away sort of the, um, like the imagination kind of, aspect of things right like sometimes you know like i'm gonna be crude here like um science is better like to not see someone naked but it's better to like have them with like clothes on because it's like it's <laughs> there's more imagination but anyways yeah. um there's a class you can take with adrian pfeiffer in the fourth year it's arc 465 i think it's called reality and its representation which talks about sort of like rendering and um like sort of theory behind that so that's also an interesting course you can look into. Uh, like, so yeah, some people render with like Photoshop. I think that's a more conceptual like basis for rendering. And then Lumion is like the more realistic basis for like, it's really good realistic basis for like rendering, right? Um, yeah, they both have their pros and cons. Yeah, I mean, if you do both well, generally, I don't think you'll get critiqued for that hard that hard by your prof unless like your project is really conceptually based already, and then you try to render in a realist in a really like realistic way. Or if you have a 
realistic. If you have like a very realistic like building, I guess, and then you try to render it like, I mean, that one, there are still like certain pros to that rendering in a conceptual way. You can like, I'm gonna say it, like you can like bullshit your way through a critique kind of in a way if you have like a really good concept, I guess. Yeah, uh, continuing the AutoCAD tutorial kind of thing. Uh, basically what I hear, have here, I've drawn a bounding box around my fabulous artwork. So you can like, so now you have your like your artwork and you need to plot. Uh, generally, I would say it's good having some text on your, well, some text on your drawing to like tell them what you're drawing. I guess, or have like a conceptual word, I guess. I feel like a lot of profs like that, but at the end of the day, it depends on your prof. So in AutoCAD, you can do annotate, always use multi-line text. Single line text is very pesky, really hard to, I feel like it's just annoying to use. So multi-line, and then let's say for Arc 100, you guys are doing like, your own room, let's say, uh, let's say, what would you say? Let's be cool and like space. So, oh, right now my text is really small because it's in point two. Uh, that's the size of it. So let's say I, you can just really change it here. Uh, let's see. How do you change text again? Sorry, it's been a while. Text size. There's no way to change it. What is that? Right now, I'm not sure how you change text size. So I'm just gonna be honest, you can just scale it uh, by 10. So now it's two. So like, let's say you have space there and then you can also just copy and paste. Generally, you'll have like more, I'm like least measure my text from like the spacing so that they're like equivalent. So I'll put like scale here. I, found that I like this. I personally like this aesthetic. So one to 10, that means your drawings are 10 times larger in real life. Or the inverse 10 to one is your drawings are 10 times larger than real life. The scale really depends on what you, if you're given a scale or what's the limits of your drawing like boundaries, which is this, I guess. So I like this aesthetic. Uh, different props might have different opinions, like having the text all in one corner or something like that. Uh, as you see, I didn't really measure it out. So they're a little different, but for a real drawing, you'll measure it out. So for printing it after you're done to a PDF, you just do plot. I had a question. Yeah. Um, how do you do curves and how do you offset lines? I. Uh, if you want to do curves, honestly, uh, let me just bring up a, assign, a previous assignment then. Uh, usually you can use arcs or, usually you can use arcs or like um, simple to do most of your curves. But if you want to do something complex like wood grain, like let's say this. That's cool, you drew the wood grain. Yeah. This isn't something that you normally can just draw with like cir circle and curve so basically to draw that you'll kind of you have to use this setting it's a uh, spline i use spline spit and let's say you do like this you don't have to get it completely accurate uh and then around curves like specifically when you're connecting the point let's say if i do this see oh it connected smoothly but sometimes it connects really weird let's say like let me do and then it connects really weird like that uh you can smoothen that out so spline is basically by control points you 
basically are like it generally follows your curve, so within like specific boundaries. These are how you like you draw complex curves. You can like smoothen that little part out there by zooming in and putting a lot more control points, and then it looks a lot more smooth like that. Uh, that's how you would draw like complex curves like this, I guess. Yeah. You even you uh, even drew like the sort of imperfection in the the toy. Yeah. Just uh, my instructor kind of recommended that honestly mm. and then it makes it seem a lot more realistic i guess and then uh so basically how did i draw this wood grain basically i googled wood grain, wood grain. you just superimpose the picture and then you draw and then uh, trace the i didn't really like trace it i just at that point i didn't know you can insert images in like into autocad and then i just basically looked at the wood grain and tried to follow it as best as i could honestly uh but if you really want to trace like the picture you can insert a picture here let's see yeah you can Thanks. you can do the same thing in rhino as well you just drag the image into rhino i think you import like a picture right now i don't have any pictures but <laughs> yeah you can like basically import a picture yeah. maybe i'll do a small tutorial on that because i forgot it's honestly been a lot of while oh uh, yeah so how do you use like offset lines basically let's say you want to offset this line offset's a good setting this is offset it's right here offset or you can just type it offset and then you select a specific distance away from your object let's say like 10 and then that's 10 the distance between that line and that line or like this way offsets like that basically yeah just a faster way to do thing 